Imagine driving along a scenic highway surrounded by lush greenery and towering mountains. Suddenly the road ahead disappears, covered in a mess of dirt and rocks. This isn't a scene from a disaster movie. It's a reality faced by many due to slope failures. So what are these slopes? They are like the paths that connect different heights. Think of natural hills and mountains or even man-made structures like highway embankments and canal banks. These slopes can be a bit tricky because they tend to move around to find a more stable spot. When they do, it's called a slope failure. And that's when things get messy like roads getting blocked. Slope failure might not be the term you hear every day, but it's a serious issue in geotechnical engineering. So let's look into the types of slope failures. Before we dive into the topic, I ask you to support Elementary Engineering on Patreon or join the channel here on YouTube if you like the content. Slopes can be classified into different categories based on their geometry, material composition, formation process or stability. However, based on their geometry, slopes are primarily classified into two categories, infinite slopes and finite slopes. Infinite is only a theoretical concept. In the real world, which itself is finite, nothing is truly infinite. But in geotechnical engineering, we use the idea of an infinite slope to make our calculations easier. In practice, this means the slope is super long and consistent compared to the depth of the soil layer. Think of natural hillsides or massive embankments where the slope stretches way farther than the depth of the soil. Then there are finite slopes, which are way more common than those never-ending infinite ones. These slopes connect land at one elevation to land that is at another elevation. You will find them everywhere, in nature and in man-made structures too. Think of the slopes alongside highways or railway embankments. The sides of canals or slopes of an earth deck. These are the examples of finite slopes. The failure of a slope or soil mass occurs when a large mass of soil slides with respect to the remaining mass. The main forces causing this instability are gravity and seepage. In earthquake prone areas, seismic activity can also play a big role. These forces, known as actuating forces, create shearing stresses throughout the soil. It's all about the balance between these forces and the soil's resistance. If the shearing resistance on any potential failure surface isn't strong enough to counter the shearing stresses, the soil will fail, leading to a mass movement along a slip surface. This resistance comes mainly from the soil's shear strength along with the natural factors like plant roots. In simpler words, when the forces pushing the soil down are stronger than the soil's ability to hold itself, what we call shear strength, the slope fails. Think of it like holding a heavy bag. If it's too heavy, your grip slips and down it goes. Several things can disrupt this balance like water weight. Too much water can make the soil heavier and harder to hold in place. Then there are extra loads, adding more weight on the top of the soil like buildings or vehicles can stress it out. Then there is seepage pressure. Water moving through the soil can create pressure pushing it around. Then soil is also get weakened. If the soil gets too wet or worn down by weather, it loses its strength and can't hold its shape. All these factors can make the soil weak and slide down, causing a slope failure. 
There are many types of slow failure. Let's dive into few of them which focus more on the mechanics and the characteristics of the soil movement. First is a rotational failure. This type of failure is common in finite slopes. Rotational failure happens when a chunk of soil rotates along a slip surface, moving downward and outward. As the soil slides, it rotates backward, leaving a concave scar at the top and a bulging toe at the bottom. This slip surface is usually circular in homogeneous soil conditions and can be non-circular in non-homogeneous soil. This type of failure often occurs on steep slopes that are oversaturated with water, where excess pore water pressure weakens the soil's shear strength. Engineers frequently analyze these using the method of slices. Rotational failures can be further divided into three categories. First is slow failure. This happens when the failure surface cuts through the sloped section of the slope. It's like a slice through the middle, causing the upper part to slide down. It is common in slopes with uniform material properties. Then second category is toe failure. Here the failure happens along a surface that passes through the toe of the slope. It often occurs in slopes with a stronger base but weaker upper layers. This is the most common type of rotational failure. Third category of rotational failure is base failure. In this case, the failure surface dips below the toe of the slope. This usually happens when there is a weak layer of soil or rock underneath, causing the entire slope to collapse from the bottom up. Then we have another kind of slow failure, translational failure. These types of failures are common in infinite slopes. This type of failure happens when a mass of soil slides parallel to the slope surface, maintaining a consistent depth throughout. The depth is relatively shallow compared to the length of the slope, and the failure surface remains flat. While it may appear curved in this illustration, in reality the shallow depth often makes the curve less noticeable at the surface level. This failure is common in slopes with uniform materials and where a thin layer of soil sits on the top of a rigid bedrock. Then next type of failure is compound failure. Compound failure is a mix of both rotational and translational failures. It occurs when the failure surface is not purely curved like in rotational failure or purely flat like in translational failure, but instead incorporates elements of both. The upper portion of the slope may fall in rotational manner, where the material moves along a curved surface, while the lower portion may fail in a translational manner, where the material slides along a more or less horizontal or flat surface. This combination often happens in slopes where different layers of material with varying strengths or properties are present. This type of failure is observed in more complex slope conditions, where the failure is influenced by both the geometry of the slope and the material characteristics. Then there is wedge failure. Wedge failure, also known as plane or block failure, happens when distinct blocks or wedges of the soil becomes separated and slide along an inclined plane. This type of failure shares similarities with translational failure. Unlike translation failures, which typically happens in infinite slopes, wedge failures can occur in finite slopes made of two different materials or in homogeneous slopes with cracks, fissures, joints or other weak planes. These weaknesses create the conditions for the wedge-shaped block to slide out. Then there are falls type of failure. Falls occur when rocks suddenly detach and drop due to weathering, erosion or cracks in the rock. This abrupt movement is often triggered by the presence of discontinuities like 
joints and fractures. Then there is a toppling failure. Toppling failure occurs when blocks of rock rotate forward and fall due to gravity. This typically happens on steep slopes with vertical cracks or discontinuities, causing the rock to tilt and eventually topple over. Then there are flows. Flows occur when soil or debris moves down slope like a viscous fluid. Often triggered by heavy rainfall or rapid snow melt, leading to a slow but continuous movement. Then there exists creep. Creep is a slow, continuous downward movement of soil or rock due to gravity, happening gradually over time without a distinct failure surface. Understanding the different types of slope failures, from rotational to translational to more complex ones like compound and wedge failures, is crucial in geotechnical engineering. Each type has its unique characteristics and causes. Whether it's a sudden drop of rocks in falls, the slow movement of soil in creep, or the fluid-like motion in flows. By recognizing these failures, engineers can better analyze and mitigate risks, ensuring the stability and the safety of both natural and man-made slopes. So whether you are dealing with a steep hillside or a carefully constructed embankment, knowing your slope failures can make all the difference. I would like to thank my patron for supporting elementary engineering financially. Also, if you think elementary engineering has given you knowledge that worth something to you, consider supporting this channel on patron and get access to the questions and their solutions related to the various topics of soil mechanics. Your support will help me continue my journey of creating more such valuable content. Also, you can support me here on YouTube by joining this channel. Spreading a word about elementary engineering will also be of great help. Only your love and support keeps elementary engineering going. You can find the links of books and other resources I referred for the creation of this video in the description. Read different types of slope failure on elementaryengineeringlibrary.com. Thank you.